Welcome back to the channel. It's me, Adam. I hope you're all doing well. Right now, guys, Bitcoin is flying. Not Ethereum, not Cardano, not Dogecoin, not Shiba Inu, Bitcoin. When we go to coinmarketcap.com, we see that it's up 3% over the last 24 hours. For a total of 13.5% over the past week, as well as Ethereum up 1.64%. So, I mean, it's still pretty good, but not as much as Bitcoin, but up 10% for the week. So that is very good. Otherwise, if you take a look at the rest of the altcoins, I mean, some are doing well, some are not, but but right now, all eyes are on Bitcoin. And I was listening to YouTuber FX Evolution, who pretty much described Bitcoin as the index of cryptocurrencies. So for me personally, I'm invested in Bitcoin and Ethereum, and I do want to get into Cardano, but I haven't done that yet. And I also invest in Coinbase and Voyager Digital, which are crypto brokerages, because when we look at Coinbase stock, it's finally above $300 for the first time in a long time. Let's look at the last six months. Yeah, we literally haven't been here since May. It looks like it's recovering for the very short term, but I mean, this is a super volatile stock. I wouldn't be surprised tomorrow if it was down 10% or again, up 10%. It's anyone's guess. And right now it's largely following how well Bitcoin is doing, but eventually I think the stock itself will, it'll still represent the underlying price of Bitcoin. But I also believe that once Wall Street and investors realize how much crazy profit this company is making and at the staggering rate that it's growing, I could easily see Coinbase at a very different valuation in six months from now than it is today. I mean, I don't know what that valuation is going to be, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's much different than this one. And for the record, it has a market cap of $64.5 billion. We'll get into more profits and all of that in a different video. I'll go specifically into Coinbase. But the other stock that I'm also invested in and that's had a little bit rougher of a time, which would be an understatement, would be Voyager Digital, which was up 4% today and not even two months ago. But looking at the six months chart, we see a vicious down cycle over the past month and a half, pretty much ever since like the beginning of September. The price has gone from just under $16 all the way down to $9.52, down 40% in a month and a half. So what gives with that? Why is Voyager underperforming so much? And just like Coinbase, they've been doing very well for themselves, growing at a crazy rate. Maybe it's because they're not profitable yet. Maybe it's because they have a market cap of 1.9 billion Canadian dollars. And actually, if you do zoom out over the past year, we do see that it did have a very huge run up going from under a dollar US all the way up to all the way up to a 52 week high of $30.20 back in April. But since then, we've just been in a big downtrend. But again, as we take a look at Bitcoin on the charts, if it does continue ripping higher, that could prove to be a catalyst for Voyager Digital. And another potential catalyst for the stock is that right now, small caps are trading at historically low valuations. Not to mention the end of October going into November into January time, is seasonally one of the best times that stocks have their biggest gains of the year. And that's not for sure necessarily. However, looking at the charts over the past few weeks, a rally into the end of the year isn't off the table whatsoever. And now for my favorite part of the videos, the candlesticks. So right now we're looking at the dailies. We see a nice double bottom at the end of September into October. And on October 1st, Bitcoin opened about 41,000. And ever since then, we have gone up about another $22,000 in about, in about what, 19 days. That's unbelievable. And zooming out even more, we see the all time high back in April. We could potentially be making new all time highs very shortly. By the time you're watching this video, maybe Bitcoin has already hit those all time highs. So how does it do that? I want to take a look at the four hour chart. And you see a really nice grind to the upside. Since that rally at the beginning of October, it went up, hit that 20 EMA, shot up again. Again, grinding up higher, having a pullback, and then finding buying pressure on that 50 EMA. And again, now we're still respecting that 20 EMA grinding higher and higher. But right now, we've obviously hit a very critical resistance level. So how do we break all-time highs? First of all, if we do break that all-time high, woof, like how high does Bitcoin go at that? How fast does it go up at that point? We'll have to see. But how can we reach all-time highs on the technicals? There's a few ways. The first one is just to continue ripping up higher and then just breaking at that point. All right, now you're at all time highs. The second way is that now we consolidate at this resistance point and then break it. And that allows the RSI to breathe a little bit so that we aren't continually overbought. Because as we can see, usually when we get overbought, we tend to pull back a little bit. Again, that's not an absolute indicator whatsoever. You have to take all your indications and create your own judgments from them. Or another healthy way on the charts is that if it does pull back to the 20 or the 50 EMA, and if it does hit either of these moving averages, that could be a really nice place for a potential swing play. When we take a look at Ethereum on the daily, we see that we're still not near those all time highs. So that's what I meant earlier, where everyone's just focusing on Bitcoin because again, we're right next to those all time highs. Whereas with Ethereum, we're not, we're not quite there yet, but usually when Bitcoin cools down a little bit, all eyes then become on Ethereum. And then at one point it becomes all on Cardano, which I also want to look at. And this one's a little bit more in no man's land. Again, I haven't gotten a chance to get into Cardano yet and I do want to. So I'm looking for my opportunity as well. And let's take a look at Coinbase. 
So we had the direct public offering and I'll have to admit I was one of the people that started buying on that first day. I learned a very valuable lesson about buying a new stock on the market, but that's not always true because sometimes it runs up as well. But the rule of thumb for me from now on at least is that Wall Street doesn't know how to value new public companies. I'm happy to say that I'm finally at my break even point right now. The price right now of coin is 305 and I think my average is 306. So I'm right there, but I, but I remember being at these lows earlier this year. I was like, man, what do I do? However, I do like the company. That's why I kept buying into it and averaging down. If it was just a trade that went wrong, I would just get rid of it, take my loss, and then move on from there. But I'm trying to invest in this company for long term, nibble as it goes down, and then when it does take off, like, like the past few days, which is not, again, not surprising because that's the nature of a volatile stock. It goes up a lot and it goes down a lot. And if you can stomach that volatility over the long term in good companies, then you'll probably do very well for yourself. With that being said, Voyager Digital. Is this a good stock? And I'll make a more in-depth video on Voyager Digital and Coinbase in a further video. We could draw a nice trend line going down over here. So with all those potential catalysts that I mentioned earlier, I start getting really excited when we cross uh, this blue trend line, even more so once we break the $16 to $17 mark because that's where previous resistances were. And if we were to see the stock go up with conviction above those prices, that could be really exciting. Otherwise, just trying to average down on my position, not so worried about it. I mean, I mean, it's a high risk, high reward play based on crypto, which itself is a high risk, high reward play. So as long as you risk manage, you'll always be fine. Let me know in the comments below what you think Bitcoin is going to be doing in the short term. When is it going to break those all time highs? Is it going to be this week, this month, or is it at resistance now and going to sell off? Let me know in the comments below. As always, like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.